God bless you. As you come in, let me know where you're from. Amen. And I welcome you all to It's Supernatural, It's Real. To God be the glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Welcome, David. Hallelujah, man of God. Praise the name of Jesus. All right. All right, so we give God all the praise. Amen. As we we're waiting. Hallelujah. So while we are waiting for uh, more people to join, let us uh, join together now in prayer. Amen. I'm going to talk today about something uh, that is very distressing. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you. Very distressing uh, with uh, many people. Amen. Uh, and the pain that it's causing them to experience and uh, what, um, what we need to do to recognize uh, this spirit in operation. Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Okay, so I see Pastor Tunde from Nigeria coming in. Amen. If you haven't hit the share button, please do so. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. So, for those of you here now, let us begin to pray. Amen. As others join in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Almighty God, we thank you for your love and your mercy, O oh God. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who you sent to die for us, to save the world. We thank you, Father. For the power in his blood that is seated in the mercy seat in heaven. We thank you, Lord, for your word that will never go void, but that will fulfill what it says. Thank you, O oh gracious and mighty God. Holy Spirit, move upon those that are participating now in this uh, program move in their hearts in the name of Jesus Christ let there be healings and breakthroughs and deliverances in the name of Jesus Christ let everyone's need oh God that's joining in this program be met in the name of Jesus Christ I speak peace in your people's hearts I speak peace in your people's hearts I speak blessings over their lives. I speak favor. Let there be favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I release angels, angels from heaven. I dispatch them to your people now, to their homes where they are, to protect them and minister to all of their needs. I thank you, O oh God. I thank you, O oh God. I want you joining me just to receive 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 hallelujah i speak peace in your homes peace upon your life peace in your heart peace in your mind in the in the name of the lord jesus christ let peace take you over wherever you are peace in the name of jesus christ i cover you with the blood of jesus christ no weapon can prosper against you. No weapon can prosper against you. In the name of the Lord that is above all names, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know that there is power in that name, Jesus. Great power in that name, Jesus. There is great power in the name Jesus. And as Christians, 
we must use the authority. Amen. We must use the authority that Jesus gives, gives us in his name. Amen. Many things can happen in the spirit before the natural if you use the name Jesus and not just use his name as power of attorney, but believe that by his name, what you say is established. Amen. Now, I want to go into uh, a very important thing that overcomes so many people. And that is the issue of recognizing deception. In these end days, deception is at an all-time high. And it's very hard sometimes for people to distinguish the difference because they don't understand what spirit is operating in someone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I hear the Lord saying someone is being healed in their chest. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Whoever you are, receive that now. I rebuke that pain in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. We give God praise. Amen. So now, uh, concerning deception and the pain and great distress that it causes, um, we have to recognize what we're dealing with. Amen. We have to recognize what we're dealing with. So many souls are hurting. So many souls are hurting because they're overcome by this pain that the deception, the deceit in a relationship that they have with someone has caused. And so much of the pain that people can experience is caused by sometimes what other people do to them. Amen. And in some cases, what people allow others to do to them. They thought they could trust someone that they found out that they could not. And they were deceived and they were hurt. This is where many people are today. And they don't know how to overcome it. But that's not what I want to talk about today. I want to get into... God bless you all joining. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Let there be peace over your life. Peace in your homes in Jesus' name. So I want to talk more specifically today about recognizing, recognizing deceit. God bless you. Recognizing deceit. Amen. So we know, amen, 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 amen. I'm going to get to prayers. I'm going to get to prayers in that segment of this, uh, of this broadcast. Hallelujah. So we know, I want you to, to, to stay with me here. Um, we know that people who hurt others, people who deceive others, okay, they come with a plan. They come with a plan to hurt people, all right? When you are looking at a situation that is distressing you, one of the things that you must recognize is the spirit in that person, the spirit inside of that person. Who is in that person? Now, Christians who love the Lord, when we join together with Christ, we are one spirit with him. One spirit. That's what the Bible says. So you are no longer yourself. You are one with Christ. 
Now you may join together with someone, whether it's in marriage or either uh, you go to work in a workplace and you develop a relationship with an, an employee that's friendship or with your boss. There are many different types of relationships that we can get into. So imagine you're in this relationship and all of a sudden, which is what many of you have experienced, you uh, feel the pain because there was betrayal or there was deceit. My question to you is, did you ever stop to consider who you were dealing with in that person? Because one of the things that you have to understand, beloved, is that the Holy Spirit in someone, Christ in someone, will never ever intentionally do harm to you. Never. Never. And so this is where many people, this is what many people get stuck on because they don't stop and take the time to first pray and then second to consider who they're dealing with. The Bible says we don't fight flesh and blood. So you're not, you're not dealing with the person that you think you're dealing with. You're not dealing with that person. Remember when Peter spoke words to Jesus that Jesus uh, did not approve. And he said, get back from me, Satan. Jesus recognized who was speaking through Peter. He recognized him. And so you have to do the same thing. In your relationships with people, you have to recognize who you are dealing with. And once you recognize who you're dealing with, you have to then deal with it. And it may not be a, it may not be that you have to deal with it in the natural. You might not be able to. You might not be able to have the kind of discussion that you want with that person. So you have to deal with things in the spirit. You have to pray. Amen. Now I want to say this also. And I'm trying to take my time because there are many things that I want to say regarding this, um, this issue. Um, and if everybody can go to 2 Timothy uh, 2.4, 2 Timothy 2.4, and don't worry, I'll get to uh, praying, praying for you. All right, go to 2 Timothy 2.4. And there's a reason why I'm uh, going to share this scripture with you here. I want to read what? Uh, the Lord says, 2 Timothy 2, 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires and will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myths. Now, the reason why I read this scripture, good morning, is because many people want to hear what they want to hear in order to work out whatever it is they want to work out. And they don't want to hear the truth. And so they're deceived. They want to only hear what is going to work in their favor for something that they want and not hear the truth so that it can help them. So They'll listen to this person, they'll listen to that person, but they won't go to God's word to find out what does God say? What does God say? And so I want to go over a few, a few scriptures with you about what God says concerning deception. Amen? Concerning deception. But before we do that, I want to go to 1 Timothy 4 and 1. 1 Timothy 4 and 1. 
because I want to listen I want you to listen to what Timothy tells us amen but the spirit explicitly says that in later times some will fall away from the faith listen to that but the spirit explicitly says that in later times some will fall away from the faith now before I read the rest I want to say this here that the enemy comes to chisel away at your heart. And when he chisels away through deception, betrayal, lies, schemes, and plans, he's able to break through and contaminate your thoughts. And when he starts to contaminate your thoughts, he can get into your heart and then have impact on your faith. You gotta see how all of this is working together in regards to what I'm speaking of concerning relationships and deception. The enemy can impact your faith in a negative way and cause fear, fear, okay? So I'm going to go back and read this again, but the, the, the Spirit explicitly says that in later times, some will fall away from the faith. So then what happens is, when your faith has been impacted because you've been betrayed, you've been lied to, you've been hurt, you can begin to fall away from the truth of God. And then not only that, but you find yourself in a place where you're questioning everything, where you're doubting everything about what God says, even though you may hear it. Hear me now. Even though you may hear it, you still can doubt inside your heart and question the truth. You must prevent this. You must prevent this and come back to God to understand what God's truth is so that, A, you'll maintain your eternal salvation. You're not turning away from Him, from what someone else has said or someone that is using the gospel, and I should say it that way, um, to benefit themselves and cause pain that can happen in people's hearts because they're not giving you the truth. I'm just going to say it like that. I'm, I'm just going to say it like that. Okay, so now he goes on to say that some will fall away from faith paying attention paying attention to deceitful spirits, deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. Now, have many of you ever asked yourself, what does God say about deception? What does God say that I should do concerning deceiving spirits? so that I can protect myself because he said, guard your heart with all diligence. So what is it that you need to do to guard yourself against deceiving spirits? There's so many, there's so many that are among us today and we have to be careful we have to be careful because, okay, we have to be careful because those spirits want nothing more than to overcome you. They want nothing more than to overcome you. Now, before I get into a couple of other scriptures, because I want to show you what God says. God bless you, Pastor Ron. I want to show you what God says here, okay? People who come to deceive 
who do not come to love you, who do not come with the right heart to encourage you or to lift you up or to help you in an hour of need, those people, they come with a plan usually already of how they can hurt you. There are people there out here like that. Okay, there are people out here like that. They concoct schemes. They think about methods that they can use to come against someone. And they also do things like not say anything if they're in a relationship with you because they know that they're not saying anything is going to discourage you as well. Deceit. It's all deceit. Okay? So, I want to go here to our first one. These things are very, very uh, important. Very, very important. And the first one is this. Let's go to Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5 and 6. Ephesians 5 and 6. Okay. All right, I'm going to pull that up here. Uh, I want everybody to go there. I'm going to pull it up in two different translations. Okay. All right. So I'm going to pull this up here in two different translations because I want you to get this. Okay. All right. So first I'm going to read this. Okay. First I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version. God bless you. Ephesians 5 and 6. Let no one let no one deceive you with empty arguments. What are empty arguments? Let no one deceive you with those. Those are things that people say that can encourage you to sin. Encourage you to go against the will of God. But God is saying, don't let anyone deceive you with those things. Be careful hearing what other people tell you because people who come to deceive you are not in any way trying to encourage you or help you along your journey. They're coming for one reason and that's to harm you. Remember what Jesus said. He said that Satan comes only to what? Kill, steal, and destroy. And as I mentioned earlier, you have to understand or recognize rather, what spirit are you dealing with? What spirit in that person are you dealing with? So the scripture goes on to say, for, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience, those who uh, hab habitually sin. But God is saying here, don't let it, don't let no man deceive you with vain words. Vain words. Conversations that will encourage you to sin. Cut them out. Don't receive those words. Anything that you're watching on television, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, social media, anything that is encouraging you to go against what God's will is, you have to stop it. You have to stop it. God is giving a direct order. He's saying, do not let any man, any woman, anyone deceive you. Amen? So now you have to go back and take an account of the relationships that you have. I'm going to encourage you to do that. Take an account of the relationships that you have and evaluate them. 
evaluate them. God's voice must be stronger in your life. Amen. Greater, stronger. Amen. Closer intimacy with God. Yes, Pastor Ron. So I encourage you to go back in and evaluate your relationships to recognize the spirit that you are dealing with in a particular person. A lot of times, unfortunately, people who are abused, they don't recognize abuse because they don't understand what abuse is. I know because I was one of them. I did not understand what it was until I went to God's word. And that's where I learned the truth about what deception is, what abuse is. I had already experienced the pain of betrayal, the pain of lies and several different types of relationships. But when something becomes uh, consistent more so in your life and you're used to dealing with it all the time, it can become your norm. And unfortunately, that's the case for so many people. It becomes their norm. And they just live with it. And they live in pain. And they don't know how to overcome the pain. Because they don't even know what they're dealing with. They just know that it's pain. So really what they're dealing with more is the pain instead of understanding or even trying to figure out who it is that they're dealing with in that person. See, the moment that awareness comes, you're able to do something about it. When you're aware of something, instantly, you're going to make a choice one way or another, whether you're going to continue to deal with it or whether you're not. As soon as you're aware, your reality changes. And when your reality changes, then Everything changes. So you can make clear decisions about what you're going to do in a particular relationship. Okay, I really want to, I could go into so many um, areas with this, but I'm really trying to stay, I'm really trying to stay, um, stay with, with, Understanding how to recognize deception, okay? Now, I'm, I'm looking at the time, so I know we're getting close, and I will pray for people. All right. Okay. The next thing is that you have to understand that when you're dealing with people in relationships and their spirit is not joined to Christ, now they're living in darkness. That's what the Bible says. They're living in darkness. That's the cond condemnation. They're living in darkness because there are men and women that choose to live in darkness. They don't choose light. They don't choose to live in Christ. And they're in different parts of the world. And when you're in the workforce, you're coming in contact with all different types of people. And you have to take that in consideration. That's why it's so important for you to... Recognize the spirit that is in someone. Because if you don't recognize that spirit, then you can end up in pain. But when you do, you have a chance to control what happens. Amen. You have a chance to control what happens with the Holy Spirit. Amen. The guidance and direction from the Holy Ghost. Amen. So... I know this is hard for some people to believe because when someone is in an abusive relationship and they don't know the truth because they just are in so much pain and they have not taken the time to study God's word, they don't know that people who do wicked things, okay, like King David says here in Psalms uh, 36 and 3, they fail to do good. They fail to do good. They fail to act wisely. So if you are in a relationship with someone and their heart is not joined with the Lord and they're not one spirit with the Lord, 
then now you have to understand what can happen, what you are subjecting yourself to. And you have to know that if, you're subje if you choose to subject yourself willingly in a relationship with someone that's not joined with the Lord, and I'm just going where the Holy Spirit is, is uh, leading me with this here today, that if you choose to do that, then you're going to subject yourself to things that they can do. But understand that when you do that, those are the kind of results that you'll experience. Those are the kind of results that you'll experience. Those are the, are the kind of experiences that you will have with that person. So it's important to recognize, and I can't say that enough, the spirit that you are in, uh, or having interactions with, I should say, having interactions with. Because many times people are having interactions with Satan and they don't even know that they're interacting with Satan. They don't even know. And so therefore Satan is able to take advantage in their life because they're not aware that he's even there and operating through them. Amen? So I want to go to the next scripture. I'm keeping track of the time here because I do want to, um, I do want to uh, get to prayer. All right. So here's another thing. Here's another uh, thing that I want you to take note of here. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to Proverbs 12 and 5. Proverbs 12 and 5. Proverbs 12 and 5. Amen. I'm going to pull it up in... Um, Okay. All right. Proverbs 12 and 5. Okay. Join late. Hallelujah. God bless you. All right. Okay. Now we're at Proverbs 12 and 5. Okay. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsel of the wicked are deceit. So what he's telling you here is that if you seek advice from just anyone and you've not prayed and you've not come to the Lord and say, Lord, should I go ask this person this thing? Should I involve myself with this person in this uh, thing? If you're not doing that, you can be opening yourself up to someone who will deceive you. If you're seeking to ask, you know, help and advice, and you don't stop to ask the Lord, should you even ask that person? You can be subjecting yourself without even knowing it to counsel that will give you deceitful advice. Interactions with Satan. These are interactions with Satan. You have to seek counsel. If you are looking for advice from someone, I say pray first. Pray first. So that you can be led by God. Led by God. The Bible tells us that sons of God are led by His Spirit. We're not led by our own opinions or our own thoughts. We're not led. We're not led by what other people say and what other people think. We're led by the Spirit of God. Amen? 
So if there's counsel that you're seeking, if there's advice that you're seeking, if there's information that you're seeking, if there's help that you're seeking, you need to pray and you need to know that the person that you are seeking it from is joined together with Christ so that you won't be deceived. In this hour, in this day, The, 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 the plans of the enemy are treacherous, but they cannot work. They cannot work against one who is joined with Christ and who always seeks him first. They cannot work. They cannot work. And not against one who prays fervently all the time in the spirit. It can, it's impossible. When you have Jesus, when you have the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth, who always gives us the truth, it's impossible. That's why it's important to keep yourself close to the Lord, close to the Lord, close to the Holy Spirit, so that you're always given the truth. You're always led in the right direction in your relationships with people. Amen. Now, I hear the Lord saying, it's time to pray in the Holy Spirit. So I want us to now just come together and pray. Yes, because I'm going to pray and let's pray against uh, the plans of the enemy trying to deceive you in your life, trying to uh, betray you, people that he's using to try to betray you. We're gonna pray against lies, okay? That he wants to tell you through people. Pray against those kind of evil influences around you and around your family. Okay, we're gonna pray about these things, all right? So let's begin to pray now, okay, in the Spirit. And if you don't know how to pray in the Spirit, then what I want you to do is just bless the Lord, all right? Just bless the Lord and just keep blessing the Lord, amen? All right. Hallelujah. Ligayanda la morianta, la gosse telebosha, l'andolo bossi anda la moco, le gore basata, le gosanda la moco re bataya, ligayanda la moriata, ora scanda la mori, mi anta la correscata, ma do cosce che te la va, la gora basanda moco, ma daia casoto lo bosca, le gonde masciunto, la sondolo bossi a caia, La socorre basanda la moschete, raba cara basanda la mosca, le yondo lo coriacata. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against the plans of the enemy, against your people's lives. In the name of the Lord, I destroy the plans of the enemy against them, plans to deceive them. In the name of the Lord, plans to betray them, lies that are being concocted now to tell them, to confuse them. I destroy them by the blood of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Every wicked influence around them, every wicked influence that was sent to damage their hearts, to confuse their minds, Oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I destroy them and I bind them now with the blood of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, those wicked influences are gone. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every plan and every work of the enemy against them to manipulate them, oh God, I destroy it now in the name of Jesus Christ. By the blood of Jesus, I destroy those plans in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Every plan to manipulate your people is destroyed in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, open their eyes more, O oh God. Show them the way in the name of Jesus Christ that they may not ever be deceived, but always led by your spirit, O oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I speak victory over them. I speak victory over them. I speak clarity of mind in the name of the Lord. I speak peace in their hearts in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. La sonda la bosca, le anda la more a cata, le gore bassa da la more a ta, le gore bassa da la more, le sonda la boschia ta, le sonda la mo corre bacata ya, mara ca sonda la boscia, le gore bassa da la more a canda, me corre bassa ta la co. Shai anda la mosa, lo gore basa anda, me gore basa ne mosha, le gose baba basha ya kata, lo gore basa da la moko. I cut those devils off of your people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Roske baba basha ka, la yanta la so gore ba, lo gore basa na la gore basa, le sonto la boski anda la mo, le ba anda la mo gore basa ta. I speak love. I love in their households, love in their hearts, love, hallelujah, love in the name of Jesus Christ. No deception, no deception in the name of the, of the name above all names, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I turn their situations around in the spirit. I turn their situations around in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. By the blood of Jesus Christ, I give you praise. I turn them around in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What the enemy tried to do, it has failed in Jesus Christ's name. It has failed in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I want to take just the last few minutes here that we have in the broadcast. Thank you, Lord. I just want to take the last few minutes Okay. <clears throat> all right. Glory to God. Amen. And welcome all you who have joined. God bless you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The Lord just wants his people to love him and to trust him and to come to him. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Okay, so who is having back pain. Thank you, Lord. I rebuke that pain in the back in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I rebuke it in Jesus Christ's name. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Be healed. Hallelujah. Be healed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we give you praise. Oh, we give you praise, Master. We give you praise, Master Jesus. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Someone that's experiencing a problem in their knee, I rebuke that pain in the name of the Lord Jesus. Be healed. Hallelujah. Receive your healing. Receive your miracle. Thank you, precious Jesus. Receive it. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. Okay, so I did not get to go and 
and uh, see the uh, comments. I will go back through them in um, a few minutes um, so that I can uh, see some of the things that uh, you have either commented or either um, asked for in prayer. Um, hallelujah. Okay, let me come over here. Let me come over here. All right. Okay. The Cross Network is so gracious in giving us extra time. So, uh, I just haven't... Okay. Okay, so I'm seeing the uh, comments here. And I just haven't... So, amen. All right. So I will go back through these. Uh, but what I want you to do, for those of you that received healing, I would like for you to please uh, email us at hello at heartsofgod.org. Hello at heartsofgod.org. And let us know what the Lord has done for you, okay? Um, there were several of you that the Lord touched and healed. Amen. Um, you know, to keep your miracle, you must tell what the Lord did. Amen. Testify. We testify about the goodness of the Lord. Don't let the enemy steal your miracle. It is done. You are healed. Amen. Do something that you weren't able to do before, and you will see. You will know that you were healed. Amen. To God be the glory. Okay, so I know we're coming very close now. Okay, to the end of our, our program. Um, I'll be back live next week here on the Cross uh, Network and um, on our Hearts page on It's Supernatural, It's Real. And until then, remember to Keep Jesus first. Keep the Lord first. Amen. Keep the Lord first. Pray. Seek God. Repent if you need to. Amen. God bless you.